And then I hope you're the there we are. Okay. Welcome everybody to the room where it happens. To the Rochester Eclipse Task Force meeting, October of 2023. We are less than six months away from the big event. Dan, how many days are we away? Uh, we are at 172, I believe. Yep. So, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I hate saying that number now. I love saying that number. <laughs> I do. Uh, that's because Dan has so much to do before then. And all I have to do is sort of be your glue and pom-poms and megaphone. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Deborah Ross. I'm chair of the Eclipse Task Force. Started working on this back right after the last great American eclipse in 2017, pulling Rochester together with lots of help and lots of direction and lots of momentum. And nobody thinks I'm crazy anymore. <laughs> this is Dan Schneiderman. So uh, I am the Eclipse Partnership Coordinator here at the RMSE, the Your Rochester Museum and Science Center. I'm one of the co-chairs. I've uh, been part of this crew since 2019. Yeah, when I first joined in, uh, right here in this room. I still have a slide. I have video footage from then too, as well. <laughs> we'll need that later. We'll need that later. Uh, to kind of kick us off today, actually, before we kick off today, uh, who is here for the first time ever? Just raise a hand. Oh, this is great. It's like a third of the room. Fantastic. Perfect. Welcome to your first Eclipse Task Force meeting. We are so sorry for dragging you in. Uh, so I'm going to kick us off with a video. It hit help if I did the right one. Uh, not to call them, them, Rebecca LeClaire, do you want to introduce this group? Hello, everybody. Rebecca LeClaire, a member of this wonderful task force, and I'm so glad to see you all here. I represent Five by Five, and that is a new music ensemble here in Rochester, and they have commissioned new work to be played in January here at the Planetarium, Five special pieces and I was so glad to be part of this. You see the man right there in purple. His name is Mark Mellitz. He's an Eastman School graduate based out of Chicago now. He wrote a special song named Eclipse <laughs> <laughs> for them. And they have practiced it a couple of times already, but he came to Rochester in September. And I was there when he heard them playing his composition for the very first time on their instruments. So take it away. So be on the lookout for more information as we get closer. So now to share the screen again. Actually, wait, before I share the screen, making sure that we share everything with it. Yep. Okay. Yes. So, uh, you know, as we started doing uh, during the last couple of meetings is we thought we would share a meme. And, you know, with Halloween being uh, just over a week away, I wanted to share this one that I saw a couple of years ago uh, about trick-or-treating as an eclipse. And then for those who know me, well, I decided to make this a reality. Uh, this was last Halloween. We're going as uh, something else this year, but this is just another way that you personally can have fun. 
Okay, and just to review, for, especially for those of you who are new, but as a good review, so your Rochester Task Force is a group that does not legally exist and has not for the last six years. But what we are is a force of people coming together to make sure that our area gets lifted by all of us working together. So, but a number of different organizations kind of rose to the top really early to help us organize. And so tourism is taken care of by the uh, by Visit Rochester. We have Rachel Labor here. Uh, she'll be talking a little bit later. Of course, outreach, education, science, insert all of the infinity extra that's involved in there is Dan here at the RMSC. And uh, transportation and government, all of those liaisons and coordination is from the Genesee Transportation Council. And we have Jim Stack and Lori Marr here also to give an update. Yay. So we review this every time Yes, I know this is a lot of repeat for those who have attended in the past, but we'll do it literally every meeting. Uh, on April 8, 2024, at about 2.07 p.m., give or take a couple of seconds, depending on where you are, we will enter the eclipse when the moon just starts to pass over the sun. Uh, totality, when the sun's disk is completely obscured by the moon, that will take place at 3.20 p.m. Right here at the RMSC, it will last for 3 minutes and 38 seconds. Your location may, not may, will be different depending on where you are in this region. And then the whole thing ends at 4.33 p.m. But not very different. Not very different. It just, it's very dependent. Uh, if you're in the Finger Lakes, it's one thing. And then even then it depends where. But moving forward, very, very quick science. Moon in front of sun cast giant shadow. We are in that shadow. There we are. <laughs> If you want to hear the longer talk, come see me later. Anywhere in between these two blue lines, you are in the path of totality. The closer you are to that red line, the longer it is. If you are just outside of the path, 99.9% .9 coverage does not mean totality. Big difference. Yet again, come see us later. Uh, we wanted to do a very quick introduction. Did you Harrison, did you want to come up for a minute? So as as you'll have noticed, we have a film crew here in the uh, in the in the planet not planetarium in in the room. Um, and Harrison Near from uh, well, you can introduce yourself and tell us all about this project. Hey everybody, thanks for letting us be here. Um, I'm Harrison Near. I'm the associate producer of Totality. Uh, we're working between Sandbox Films and Cue Ball Productions, who are producing this film. Surrounded, You're surrounded by three of my colleagues, Kate Davis, David Hellbrunner, and Derek Howard in the back. Um, that's the whole crew. Uh, so very small crew making a film that hopefully we'll see a lot of, will be premiered to a lot of people and, and have a big impact. Um, we're creating a film uh, using the eclipse where we're using the eclipse to... Uh, take a lens, using the eclipse as a lens on America, on this American moment, on North American moment, Mexico and Canada included, uh, to kind of shed light on the possibilities for unity um, in our nation, beyond our nation at this time of otherwise division um, and divisiveness. So we see the eclipse as the potential to unify people um, under this thing that is much larger than us. Deb and Dan speak about it way better than I can. Uh, but we're excited to be making a film and we're excited to have Rochester as a core part of the film, one of the core communities uh, that we're highlighting in the film. So thanks so much for being a part of this in small ways, in larger ways. Uh, we'd love to understand what's going on for you and what you're planning. Uh, and we're really excited to be here sharing this uh, with you all. Uh, yeah. And so the film also represents a way that totality goes beyond the moment of totality, if that makes sense. So we're seeing this as a legacy that continues past the moment. Uh, so the film has the potential to highlight Rochester in really positive ways uh, for years to come. Um, so we're really excited to be featuring you and thanks so much for being willing to have us film and be in the space. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm particularly excited because you know what we've been doing is crafting Rochester's eclipse story. All of us, each of us individually is going to have an eclipse story at eight, on April 8th, but this community is coming together. This story is not a three minute and 38 second story. This is a seven years plus three minutes and 38 seconds 
plus the next 120 years until Rochester sees the next eclipse. And so we know that these experiences will last in each of you and all of the art that's being created, all of the experiences that you guys are creating up until totality and then for totality for both locals and visitors, everybody under the sun, Dan's expression, um, will be affected by this. So there's millions of stories that will be created and then we have this story. So we're really, really honored to be part of that for this totality film. So one thing we started a couple months ago is talking about misconceptions and well, I figured it's about time after this past weekend to tackle the weather. So uh, as we know, Greater Rochester region, what's the first thing you think of when it comes to April? Clouds, rain, snow, all of that. But here's the funny thing. Rochester, we're actually in a really good spot weather-wise for April 8th. Uh, this is one of the most cited weather graphs uh, for the eclipse, which is off of Eclipsophile. You can see Rochester is right here, and this is, you know, our percentage of cloud fraction. So here's that great thing. I want you to look here. Rochester's here. Cleveland's here. I want you to look towards the east of us and admittedly a bit towards the west of us. We're in a much better position than you would think. And if you were to zoom in a bit on New York State, well, Rochester's one of the best places to be in New York. For lots of reasons. Lots Absolutely. of reasons. For weather-wise, I want you to think about where we are in Lake Ontario and our microclimate. We often, as much as we think about getting hit by some of that lake effect snow, sometimes it kind of moves past us. And there are some very recent examples almost a year ago that, you know, some of our neighbors might have received five feet and we received less than half an inch. And I want you to think about that. Uh, but, you know, even if you were to look at uh, one thing that's going on this season is El Nino. And with, if you are to just look at the last uh, couple decades of weather data during El Nino seasons, it even gets slightly better for us. Mm -hmm. But even with all of that saying, uh, all of that said, even if we end up with a cloudy or partly cloudy day, there is still a very good chance for us to experience the eclipse. And my favorite thing to cite is from 2017 at Homestead National Monument, where back in 2017, uh, this is also a 360 video I recommend playing with. Uh, Homestead National Monument had about 20,000 people. Bill Nye, the science guy, was there, which admittedly might explain why 20,000 people were there. But in the hours leading up to it, rain, thunderstorms, just absolute sky covered in clouds. But if we were to fast forward this video a bit for during totality, let's see if I can get this position right. In a couple of seconds, you will see the clouds part. I think I have it at just the right spot. And there it is. It's a little hard to see because we're not zoomed in. Uh, if you were to hit three, I'll turn off the lights up here. There we are. There you go. Now you can see it. At just the last second, clouds moved away and people were still able to see totality, even if only for a moment. When you hear reports about clouds, what does that actually mean? Is that a fully cloudy day? Is it a partly cloudy day? Some clouds in one area, some clouds in a knot. Does it consider the entire nine region, nine county region, or is it just a part? We have to look at this at, you know, at a fine, uh, fine pick, toothpick scale because one area of our region might get clouds in another sun and we will see a traffic pattern all of a sudden people booking it to get to that clear sky uh, on the reverse side of this I do have to point out that uh, our friends in Carbondale Illinois at SIU they had a couple thousand people in their football stadium and as totality was starting a cloud formed over the stadium it did pass enough for them to experience totality for a little bit, but those people outside the stadium, 
got it for longer. Mobility is important. So I want you to remember this as people talk about the weather and say, hey, we do have a decent chance. And then we just happen to have a really nice graphic that popped up this past weekend. Day trips around Rochester uh, by Debbie. Yay, Debbie Bauer. Uh, created this great image going back from 2012, 2014, 2017, 2018. Look at all these days in the greater Rochester region. I see one color in all of these, blue. When people think about April, there are times, yes, when it can be cloudy, but this is also a strong possibility. So now kind of jumping back, uh, well, there was a group of us that went to a uh, the American Astronomical Society Eclipse Workshop. Right. Uh, for which we had a very strong Rochester representation. Uh, this week it was mostly covered on a little bit of event organizing, a little bit of community, but heavy talk about working with the press. And is there any lessons that you picked up? So yes, there was a lesson that I picked up. So Kate Russo, who is the world's eclipse task force coordinator, uh, she's Australian. She's at every single one of our national meetings. Um, she described a phenomenon of like how to think as you're speaking to the press. Um, people ask you questions and you can be kind of taken unawares. And so she recommends that instead of like sort of freezing or fleeing or fighting, you go into what she calls child mode. And child mode is that delight that you experience if you're explaining something to a child. Tapping into that and sort of seeing yourself as somebody explaining and getting excited about something that you're explaining can really help you on, on press. And then I, I realized that that's what I do. So pe <laughs> uh, people had like, th there was a name for it, right? Like you all have been calling it, you know, my children call it painfully cheerful dork. Um, <laughs> I mean, like really, and so I really am actually kind of like this. And so, but what Kate gave me that wonderful name for it, child mode, I'm in child mode. And so I confer on each of you via Kate, child mode, as you are talking, not just to press, but to your skeptical family, to your skeptical friends, to your skeptical boss, go into child mode. Thank you, Kate Russo. Actually, on that note, out of curiosity, as we do have a couple more months uh, leading into the eclipse, would people like us to go further into discussion about how to talk to the press about the eclipse? Just raise of hands. No. Just a couple. Okay. Perfect. We'll add it to the schedule. Uh, Scott Feibush, do you want to add any insight? Any the... insight? There was a good Rochester crowd. Yeah. Hi, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Scott Feibush. I work over at WXXI. Um, I gave one of the presentations about sort of how to uh, speak media, uh, and I'll be happy to do it again if you if you want us to do it locally. Um, the big takeaway that I really got from San Antonio um, is that we are in really good shape, and we should be super proud of ourselves, and we should be proud of Dan and Deb, um, and everybody who's making stuff happen. I really got the impression in talking to a lot of people from other communities there that we are uh, well ahead of the game in doing a lot of our planning, uh, that we've really thought through things maybe a lot more than a lot of other communities have. Uh, and so people are kind of looking up to us, which is awesome. Um, Deb in particular deserves a huge round of applause because she was the ringmaster uh, for, uh, for the sessions, which went great. They were two really solid days. The videos, are they up yet or they will be soon? Yes, they are. They are. The AAS's YouTube channel. I highly encourage you, um, and I'm sure Dan can distribute that link. Yeah. Hit those videos. There's some great information there, and those are there for you to see. And also, we had the best swag game yeah. of yes. anybody, anybody, everybody who was not from Rochester uh, went away with something from Rochester um, at that reception at San Antonio's museum. Uh, and the wine, in particular, Heron Hill deserves a huge round of applause. Yeah. Because that was a big exactly. And if anybody has any other questions about San Antonio, come hit me up after, after afterwards. They loved us. Yeah, yeah. we were hit. We're uh, rocking it. <laughs> we do want to give a huge thank you to everyone here and everyone a part of the task force for uh, providing us items to give away. It literally took us four suitcases between all of us. 
uh getting everything there was a lot of fun yeah i asked you listened you brought your swag um speaking of which though we do want you to keep bringing your swag to these meetings um nobody better than all the other eclipse ambassadors to you know get people excited here to tell tell everybody else about what it is that you're producing that can be bought as part of helping everybody get their identity around us being the eclipse path cheerleaders okay ah okay yeah. so also at the double as um so I'm uh, one of three people running the Eclipse Task Force nationally. Um, we have a new mini grant program. All right, so this is important. Um, actually, let me let me just grab my. I, I didn't pull out my. Can you just get my uh, the application? Oh, I didn't realize you were at the part already. Oh, my backpack. You can do it. What do, you do, do it later. I will. Um, my backpack's around somewhere. But uh, so these are grants being offered through the National Science Foundation, which uh, has given the AAS task force um, about a quarter of a million dollars to distribute to, that's it, yeah. perfect. That's all I need. Yeah. Um, okay, I just wanna read really quick. Um, so these are, we're inviting proposals for small grants to fund programs, activities, and events that will engage the public with the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse. Priority will be given to programs specifically designed to engage meaningfully in eclipse education, outreach, and activities with underrepresented groups, including women and girls, ethnic minorities, and people with physical and or mental disabilities, people who don't often imagine themselves in science careers. We want to connect those populations specifically with this eclipse to help foster that uh, understanding. Uh, so there will be 20 to 30 awards nationally um, in the range of $1,000 to $5,000. And a limited number of those awards will be between $5,000 and $20,000. So the proposals are due on Friday, November 10th. It is a very tight timeline. This, um, there's a QR code that you can scan to get to that. You can always ask me, it's been in some of our uh, notices lately. I will be sending that out in the meeting notes. But if you are reaching underserved communities, this is a grant for you. I will be recusing myself from discussing any of the Rochester groups, uh, but I'll be one of the judges there. Okay, thank you. Let's move right on. Um, Eliza Kozlowski from the George Eastman Museum. We are featured, can you come up here for just a minute? If you don't mind. Um, so at each of these meetings, we're these announcements are going to start coming thick and fast. Um, but we have uh, we just wanted to feature what the George Eastman Museum is doing and planning. Thanks, Deb. I'm going into child mode. Just be ready. Um, I, I realize I do that too. It's great. Um, all right. So picture this because I don't have any graphics to share yet. But um, our title, our tagline for what we're doing is focus, click, totality. All right. So picture that on T-shirts, on posters. Um, we're we're just we just had a merchandise meeting today. So we're just with our um, shop manager. So we're just trying to pull together all the ideas of what we want to do for merchandise. And so I'm sorry we didn't have it for San Antonio. Um, but we have a 75th anniversary also coming up next year. So we've been a little distracted. Um, and then I did want to just ask a question, uh, if anybody can let me know after, is because I love at the last meetings, people showed ornaments and talked about ornaments. They were in the photo too. Um, our vendor, our shop manager would love to know vendors that you've used to do your ornaments because we don't have one that we've specifically used. So please see me after if you have a vendor you share. Um, but anyway, a little bit about what we're doing. So we are doing... Every time I heard any of the other museums saying, oh, they're doing three days, they're doing four days. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're never gonna do that. We are doing four days because we're, we are embracing Take Tuesday too. So we are gonna have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, so, or no, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, um, opening on Monday, of course. Uh, so we are for Saturday and Sunday doing, uh, we're still finalizing exactly what the activities are gonna be on each day, but we have a whole assortment of different things that we're doing thinking about all the things that the museum does well. So a lot of um, hands-on activities in our discovery room. For us, it's making pinhole cameras and we're gonna be doing that leaning up to to help uh, equip people with pinhole cameras so that they can also look at the eclipse that way. Uh, sun prints, um, cyanotypes, where you make a photo using the sun. That's an activity we're gonna be doing. Um, we have a camera obscura, which is actually 
uh, we have a walk-in camera essentially in our discovery room, but we also have a mobile one, which is a tent. And the idea of camera obscura means darkened room. And it's what happens in your eyes when you have light come in and it goes upside down and backwards and your brain turns it around. Sorry, that was my brief science there. Yeah. Um, but what we do, uh, but that's how cameras work. It's a, a light that comes in. Then of course they put the mirror in, they did everything to sort of capture, but you can walk in and it's a really wow moment to be able to see what's coming from outside into the tent. So we're gonna have that up all weekend long. Um, we're also gonna be doing our exhibitions. Right now we have in our collections gallery, some works that include the eclipse or the moon, uh, but we're gonna have more of that on display as well. We have our Dryden Theater where we're gonna be showing a series of space themed films. So throughout the weekend, that's also our Take Tuesday two moments. So Monday night for people who aren't watching March Madness and the championship game, they can come watch. We don't know what the film is yet, but that will happen. Um, we have a Aeolian pipe organ in the mansion and our organist knows all sorts of things like the theme to Star Wars and Close Encounters and other fun things with music. We also just recently had a uh, musician out of DC who plays on the ukulele and she played, she had a moon insignia behind her and played a couple of songs, like, um, uh, a couple songs with a moon theme and she revealed at dinner that she has a whole assortment of moon theme songs. So she's gonna be coming up. We hope that she'll be performing outside on the grounds. Um, and then we are gonna be have, we're gonna be a viewing, have some viewing locations. So we're still identifying what areas of the East Lawn, but then also the West Garden where we can invite people to come and they can sort of camp out for the day, have their location so they can see the museum, but then go out and for totality actually see um, in person outside. And then after seeing how successful it was to have the live feeds here at the planetarium for the annual eclipse on Sunday, we are also going to have some feeds potentially the Dryden Theater, and we also have our multi-purpose hall, but an opportunity for people to watch various feeds across the country. So, oh, and then our uh, cafe, our eatery, open face food um, eatery, there's all sorts of themed ideas that are happening. And then we've already booked one food truck, but we'll have other food trucks as well. So a real festival atmosphere throughout those whole four days. So hopefully um, that helps. And, and we, I, we're so excited to hear all the creativity that's coming from all of you as well. So yeah, Thanks, thank you. Lara. Great. Um, Pauline Onifer, are you here? Oh, there you are. There you are. Um, yeah, we have another announcement of another really cool artistic project. All right. Hello. I am here. Oh, I'm going opposite. Okay. Um, on behalf of the Genesee County Chamber, Genesee the Eclipse campaign. Campaign. Genesee the Eclipse. Um, so back in April, the Genesee County Chamber unveiled our commemorative poster, and it featured our fanciful dairy cow, whom we named Jenny. And Jenny represents uh, the rural communities uh, found in Genesee County, where the there will be less light pollution, less le noise pollution, fewer just distractions for your eclipse viewing. And uh, Jenny has become a real hit. So there's a cardboard cutout of her that travels around the community to different fairs and festivals, libraries, businesses. And when she's not touring around and taking selfies, she is in the Genesee County Visitors Center. And through these meetings and other research, you know, we heard that the totality will bring, you know, the dark skies, the temperature will drop and animals will think it's bedtime. And so that inspired us to create our own original children's book. So Jenny Sees the Eclipse tells the story of Jenny and her farm animals down on Genesee Farm as they witness a total solar eclipse. And Jenny is the one who is wearing her safety glasses and so excited uh, for this eclipse, but everybody is making fun of her, pointing at her glasses until it gets dark and they head into the barn to put on their pajamas and brush their teeth. And it is Jenny who beckons them back out into the field and explains they're actually witnessing a total solar eclipse. And then of course she passes out glasses to everyone and they can witness this once in a lifetime experience together safely. So this uh, book is one of many merchandise uh, items that feature Jenny the cow. And I have my first original copy. And it will be available, well, it is available on Um, And the like coolest part is that 
all of, speaking of animals, all of the proceeds of this book will go towards the nonprofit animal shelters in Genesee County. Um, yeah. And so I just want to say a quick thank you because this really is a collaborative project. Um, we had Dan and Deb help consult on it. We had the agricultural community uh, provide feedback on it. Um, I wrote it with the help of the chamber and many, many revisions from many people. Um, and it was illustrated by Andy Redout, who also designed the commemorative poster and art directed by Glenn Clark of Crafting a Brand. So thank you. We're so proud. Okay, a very quick message from the city of Rochester. Kara Osipovich um, is sorry she can't make it, um, but it's very important. Uh, so if you are thinking of setting up an event in a city space and you need a permit, you need to get in touch with her. That needs to be in, the deadline is four months in advance of any event. So if you're thinking of something for the city where you'll need a permit, you need to have that in by December 8th. Okay, or December 5th, if you're doing it on, on uh, April 5th. So you need to email Kara at the city. She will set up a meeting to walk you through the entire process. Okay, Jen Lisinski, I'm asking, so we're, we're focusing on everybody under the sun. Um, and one of those populations is folks who are in retirement communities and nursing homes. And so we've asked Jen Lisinski from St. John's who was doing their own sorts of preparations to talk about preparing for that population. Deb did not tell me it was going to be this formal, but um, our plans are still coming together. I'm going to be very childlike about them. Um, uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, we're a nonprofit system of senior living communities. And so we uh, cover uh, independent living all the way to skilled care. So we have a uh, very vast different uh, population. So we, we're considering both of those uh, types of populations and we're actually having two different events. Um, so one will be at our independent living community, St. John's Meadows and folks uh, at the Meadows if you're familiar, they love their happy hours um, and, and they have them at least once a week. So uh, we're going to do a happy hour themed event at St. John's Meadows. We're also going to bring in some of the traditions that we have for our farmers markets as well. So we're kind of combining our two most popular events um, and we're going to bring the best of those together. So we're going to have themed food and cocktail drinks and musical entertainment. Um, and since the kids will be off from school, we think uh, there will be a high popularity for having your grandchildren children come. So it'll be a real intergenerational uh, type event and, and visitors. Our Meadows campus really can support a lot more people. So, and it has a lot of outdoor space so we can handle the parking. So we think that that event will probably be bigger. We might even in invite the community because we do invite a community, the surrounding community to our farmer's market events. So uh, those plans are still coming together. Now the home's a little bit different of an animal. St. John's home, if you know our campus kind of tucked in uh, Highland Park, parking is a big issue. So space we'll have to likely consider. So um, we probably will not uh, bring as much of the community into that space. Um, and the population we have to consider as well. So we have many folks with dementia. So some of the considerations, um, we have a beautiful outdoor courtyard space and we're gonna take advantage of that in our new renovations where we can open up uh, from the inside uh, big glass doors for those that wanna stay inside uh, but can still see the courtyard. We think that space is gonna be wonderful for our party out there. Uh, and they still like their cocktail hours uh, at St. John's Home as well, uh, mixed in, they have ice cream. So, so we'll, do, uh, we'll do a themed event there as well. But we also have Generations Childcare on our campus and um, we want to bring those children over. We do a lot of joint events with Generations. So we think there's a real nice opportunity there to have that intergenerational mix. Um, temperature is something we've got to think about with this population. So um, we'll have blankets available. That's what we do a lot for the outdoor events. But I think that indoor space where people can still see the outside will be very popular. Another thing to consider is dementia um, itself. And uh, we're sort of navigating, how does the sundowning come into play? What about folks that don't totally understand uh, about not looking at the sun and not wanting to wear the glasses? So we're still trying to navigate um, how we'll uh, deal with that with, uh, with that population. And to top it off, since we don't have already uh, so many things to think about, next year is St. John's 125th anniversary. So yay. 
So um, we know that we'll want to bring that together as well as part of these events and things are still coming together. So uh, that's what we've got planned. Thanks for listening. <laughs> So looking a little bit backwards, well, we all had a uh, an event this past weekend. Uh, though admittedly, the weather didn't turn out as nicely as we all would have wanted here in Rochester. But guess what? Rochester still held a ton of events. Uh, we had about 20 Eclipse-themed events take place this past Saturday all across the region, across all sorts of audiences. Uh, of course, you know, we had some folks here uh, and we did live streaming in the planetarium, uh, Stokey Farms. That's where Deb was located, along with Tyler, who uh, has done all these gorgeous posters. But you could find events all over the area. And this could not, as I saw these photos pop up on social media, and people have been sending them as well, I could not be any happier than all of the events that all of you have planned this past weekend. Uh, honestly, seeing these photos come in really made my day, made my week, made the last month so much better. I do want to point out on this quick shirt, uh, that is a Pac-Man eating an eclipse, uh, which I just love, and I'm already looking for it myself. But you can see here, people took different routes, We everything from dance to Oreos. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, we had, there was a bilingual book being read. Uh, so, uh, I want to say a Cornhill landing or Cornhill navigation. Instead of my 10 foot inflatable sun, they flattened it and did a 10 foot or almost 10 foot round orange tablecloth. And that is so clever. And the second I heard that, I was like, I just love this. I have to share this. Uh, at some point in the future, we will be talking about hands on activities for you to replicate at your own area. This is one of those really great ones. You can get them on sale now on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And probably the day after Halloween as well. Uh, and, you know, I uh, just want to also share, you know, our universities have helped out. Uh, U of R technically last weekend's was their homecoming, but they still promoted the eclipse and just seeing all this has been great. One thing that I also wanted to share is how many people saw the eclipse pop up in areas you normally wouldn't think. When it comes to April, I want you to think about all of the groups, all of the media, anyone you might interact with in one way or another, and how they might get involved. You never know. As someone with a young kid seeing Sandra Boynton do an Eclipse image, I immediately like fell in love with that. I'm like, yes, I have to save this. This is added to my personal collection. I would love to see her do an Eclipse theme book, but you know, we'll see. But start thinking about all of those partnerships you might not think about. Start thinking about all of those activations that you work with on a daily basis or you see on a daily basis and how you might be able to get the Eclipse involved with them one way or another. Uh, we do want to see if anyone had any thoughts or any lessons learned from this past weekend. Uh, I know Eliza already mentioned one, which was having the live stream being available just on any screen that you possibly can. Uh, I know we played it here in the Bosch Auditorium at the Rochester Museum and Science Center, and we did next door in the planetarium as well on three different screens. Any other lessons learned from people uh, in attendance? Yeah, um, just people need chairs. A lot of people with mobility problems, and so chairs inside and outside are a good idea. Having chairs inside and outside, that is definitely one to add to the list. Um, and then just kind of keeping us on time, we'll move forward. Uh, we did want to share that both Deb and I did some national coverage, which we weren't expecting, but, you know, it was lovely to see uh, on Fox weather. Uh, and uh, I don't know how many other people saw this, but on Forbes, we were, Rochester was described as one of the most organized locations. So that... That was a nice feather in our cap last week. Uh, for upcoming events, we're going to be out and about in the community, especially as Halloween's coming. Uh, if you are doing any Eclipse activity at your Halloween event, please share on our Eclipse calendar. We want to promote it. 
Uh, we'll be at a bunch of events. If you ever feel like volunteering, give me a shout. I will never turn down a volunteer. Uh, and then for the dashboard, did you want to do a quick update? Yeah, I did. So speaking of partnerships, it's now that time when the individuals within this task force are coming together. And um, we had designed eclipseweb.org with that exactly in mind. So if you're already, if you already have a login to eclipseweb.org, great. Log back in, make sure your password's updated. Go to your profile, upload your photo, um, and make sure your contact information is up to date. The way most folks are using this, this, this these days is to connect with each other, right? When you scroll through, you can see the stakeholder organizations and see everybody within there, their contact information is instantly accessible. So as you're thinking of your own partnerships, this is huge. You wanna be able to log into that. Let me know if you don't, if you can't figure out your user ID and password. You basically go to eclipseweb.org, hit Rochester, the community, and then you'll be in, you can select individuals by first name because who remembers people's last name or by stakeholder name or organization. And then you can also post, you can post your announcements, post upcoming subcommittee meetings, although Dan and I are mostly doing the posting on most of the meetings. Most important from my perspective, from this legacy perspective is posting links to media who write about us. So on this, we've got the whole list since uh, you know a couple of years of, uh, articles that have been written about us, TV uh, that has been produced, so that when we go back to tell this story, we have that information collected all in one place. We're not the only ones who can post, you can too. Okay, what has the RMSC been up to? Well, you can hear some more. Which related to that uh, legacy bit, if you are making your own Eclipse classes design, if you're working on any artwork, I would love a copy for our archives. One of the things that we have to do as a museum is also make sure that we, you know, record Rochester's history and capturing everything for the eclipse is part of that. Uh, to give you a quick update, uh, we've basically been doing a lot of traveling. We were at a media event in Philadelphia trying to get a lot of the news crews out there. We presented at the Fells Planetarium at the Franklin Institute. Uh, we've been at the AES Eclipse Workshop at the ASTC Annual Conference, which is a big science museum and tech center conference. Uh, lots of outreach. We're working on new hoodies because people have seen all of our ambassadors with these hoodies and said, hey, can I get one of those? We're working on it. Probably the top requested uh, swag. Uh, after doing a little bit of math recently, uh, so those giant eclipse glasses that we have traveling around the greater Rochester region, uh, since we had them uh, unveiled, they have seen over 200,000 people. Uh, and that number is getting even higher and higher. And then one thing that I can't wait to share photos of next time is next, uh, in just under two weeks, uh, the RMSC will be representing the Eclipse at a I Love New York media event at One World Observatory. So on one of the tallest floors in New York City, pitching to about 75 different media organizations uh, to come out to Rochester. Cool. Yes, in the interest of time, we will be very brief. Uh, so we have been going out and spreading the word. Uh, a few weeks ago, was in uh, Cleveland to uh, present to our National Association of, of Offices like GTC. Uh, many in the room had heard of the Eclipse, but nobody is planning for it like we are. Uh, Lori presented to the uh, New York uh, Association of Transportation Engineers um, and then to Enrich Geneva. Um, that happened already or that's coming up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just uh, a few hours ago, we were in Verona presenting to the New York State Parking and Transportation Association. These are organizations that deal with um, uh parking at colleges, universities, parking garages. They're basically the parking industry. Um, and then uh, Go Health Valor, Go is Genesee and Orleans. Uh, this is a combined health department. Uh, the Valor is uh, a medical reserve corps of volunteers. Um, Lori was able to present to- I don't know, I don't know where to stop for dessert, uh -oh. but um, we're picking up talking. possibly host on Owen. You um, yeah, yes. well, or we're swinging back for host after we get Owen. So uh, Lori was able to present to folks in Batavia 
and uh, she's also going to go to Medina. So uh, try to keep it very brief. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I forgot I had another slide. Keep sending us information about your events. We are coordinated with Dan. Uh, we want to make sure we get as many events as we can because at the end of December, we're going to kind of close the window and try to do some uh, traffic modeling to try to understand where we might see the most impact and knowing where um, venues are in proximity to each other, what overlap they might have. Um, our public safety folks and law enforcement folks are itching for this information so they can be prepared. Anything we could do to get uh, sanctioned events known is great. And please keep in mind as you schedule events, multi-day events, the size of your crowd may trigger need for things like permitting and coordinating with the health department or the county office of emergency management. So your point of contact should be your county office of emergency management or your county department of health. Start there to see, you know, did you exceed some threshold or do you expect to see to exceed a threshold where you need to take uh, particular things into consideration? For example, if you're big enough, you need to have an EMT on site. You need a safety plan. Uh, even beyond the logistics of porta potties and the like, you might need permits. Thank you. Rachel. Yep. Bringing up Rachel from Visit Rochester, as your counterpart is currently in England. She is. Her business. Hey, everybody. Rachel Labor from Visit Rochester. How are you? Well, Dan, uh, I said it yesterday at VAC. I'll say it again. He had half of my updates, but that's okay. Um, so in the interest of time, um, uh, we are, uh, are, is this updated actually? This might be from last month. Well, regardless, kind of ignore what's on here. I'll give you my updates. Um, so uh, the next slide. I think these are up. We'll go, just go back to that. Okay. So in any case, um, so things are really picking up from a Eclipse uh, tourism marketing standpoint. So just to kind of piggyback on what Dan had shared, we've been really busy on the media side this last month. There was a media event in Philadelphia. Um, and then there is an I Love New York event that Visit Rochester is participating in bringing our MSC along too. So we're really excited about that. Um, just a, a highlight from that Philadelphia event. So it took place at the Franklin Institute and we had media from Northern Virginia Magazine, Philly Magazine, BBC, USA Today, Ten Best, Extended Weekend Getaways, and more. Um, so we're looking forward to some coverage coming out of that. At the same time, if Colleen is still here, um, some of you may know that we partner with Break the Ice Media on some of the creative um, executions as well for uh, promoting Rochester in the Eclipse. And Colleen and the team from Break the Ice actually did a, um, a grassroots uh uh, disposable camera drop. So um, we had custom cameras made with the creative that the team at J Advertising had developed for us, of which you can see the preview up here. Um, we dropped 200 disposable cameras across the Philadelphia area. Um, I, I know we've talked about this before, but just wanted to share that those cameras were sent out into the world um, and we have had people pick them up and register the cameras um, and you know, a, just a great way to kind of build some additional buzz we have one of our colleagues from one of our other agencies was wearing a t-shirt that was made with the design on it, walking around Philadelphia. And someone walked up to her and was like, are you with the cameras? So just a fun anecdotal story to tell you that people got them and it was building excitement. Um, the word is getting out. There's some recent coverage on Rochester and the Eclipse, um, both the 2024, but also preparing for some conversation and dialogue around the annular eclipse on CNN, Forbes, Lonely Planet, Matador, and the Fox weather clips that Dan had shared. Um, our creative campaign, The Path of Totality, awesome, um, is that we are finalizing the assets for that and begin deploying um, paid media in our target markets very soon. And uh, last but not least, um, we have created a group tour form on our website. So the twofold, one, it'll be have group tours that want to come to Rochester can give us all their information. But we also have a Google form, a Google doc, a Google form that we'll be sending to all of our Visit Rochester partners to let us know what amenities you can offer for groups. So then if we get a group that reaches out to us, we can kind of play like matchmaker and match you, match those groups with the right, um, the right uh, uh, facilities. Um, and we are, of course, also looking for bus parking. So if that's something that your facility could offer, please do let us know. And just to piggyback on what else Dana shared, we are always, always in need of your events. So we'll try to work and synthesize events from the uh, the uh, Rock Eclipse 2024 calendar. But again, if, especially if you think that you are really trying to target out of town visitors, um, please upload that event to visitrochester.com slash events. So I think that's all the updates I have for now. Thank you.
Okay, very quickly, you know, you come here to help us get you focused. We are Image City, we focus, we are lenses. So just to focus you for the fall, design clever swag. This is what your is on your to-do list. You know this, but let's remind you. Um, ordering Eclipse glasses about which Mr. Snyderman uh, has an update. If you want to do any bulk orders, please still reach out to me. We still can do this at the RMSC. We're waiting for a large order still to come in after last month. I mentioned that there was a manufacturing delay. However, they said that you no know, things would be printed after the annular eclipse. Guess what we're at right now? We're after the annular eclipse. So I will be in contact with them and I'll be sending out updates as things come in. Great. Okay. The other thing that everybody in the path wants is updates on lodging. So those of you who are mm -hmm. in hospitality, keeping us generally in the loop about your availability is super important. Um, that is actually a story idea as well. So um, as my being chair of the AAS's committee, um, I'm kind of a funnel all over the country for reporters looking for stories. So one of the lovely things is that I can share what Rochester is doing as well as what other folks are doing. But as you have ideas for stories that can feature Rochester as well as potentially other cities in the path, I'm your girl. Please send them to me so that I can distribute the word far and wide. Um, yeah. So name your events, theme your menus, and start planning intra-community events for April, January through April to get our community excited. So as a reminder, the next meeting will be taking place here again, Wednesday, November 15th at 4 p.m. This will again be in person and over Zoom. Uh, we'll be sending out those things when we send out the video from this meeting. Sorry for the delay on the video from last meeting. Last month kind of got a little crazy with uh, all those conferences, a partial eclipse, media. It's only picking up more and more from here. Uh, as a continuous reminder, think about who is not in this room, who hasn't been activated yet. There's 1.1 million people in our nine county region. There are definitely groups that need to be involved that aren't involved. It we we need to continuously be inviting people to the table, reaching out, whatever we need to do to get that word out, we got to do it. Uh, and then we are going to turn it over to announce what folks have been up to and just had to include this photo from yeah. Lisey. Thank Aker. you so okay. much. All right. So let me just tell them. how. So as you announce what you've been up to, if you don't mind, can you just it, come to the microphone quickly? Because that way our folks on Zoom can hear you as well as it'll be uh, more audible in, in the room. So anybody who has a, announcing, even generally what kind of events you, you are planning, like Priscilla or somebody, um, please feel free to come up and share at this time. John, uh, but you... please keep it short uh, if possible as well uh, due to timing. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Oh, uh, you and keep on that, keep that photo up there. Uh, I was going to uh, uh, no, stop the share so people can see us. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mark Gilbride from Lazy Acre Alpacas. Um, when I found out you guys were had a Eclipse Coalition, I decided to join in. We're going to do a one eight, one day event uh, where you can come with your lawn chairs, yoga mats, blankets. The parking lots open up at one o'clock. We're going to have food trucks as well as a adult beverage truck there, and uh, even a yoga session probably going on at the same time with the alpacas, as you can see. And uh, that picture was taken just this morning. I still got the same wardrobe on <laughs> that had my was taken. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a, a good positive event, and hopefully, hope for a nice clear sky. Poquetzal Ferreira at Saint Bernard's Park Apartments, um, senior housing, independent senior housing. We are having a well. We have tea parties every month. And we talk about the eclipse and do eclipse stuff, cookies and stuff like that. But also on November 18th, it's International Celebration Day. And we're having, it's to celebrate family storytelling. And it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving to encourage families to tell their stories to their grandkids and their families. So we're gathering together and 
I'm a professional storyteller, so I'll get them started, sit in a big circle, and they, the mic gets passed around. And the elders that have seen other eclipses, that's part of their thing to tell. But the, the main thing is we pass around, say, you can tell a real family story, a fake family story. Anything, we just want to get them so that they're ready to tell stories at Thanksgiving and not just talk, watch TV and engage. So the, the other thing for the old adults is to say, whatever age your grandkids are, you have to tell them what you did when you were that age. <laughs> so they can recognize that at once you were a child. Like mm -hmm. that. so that's it. I just want to recognize Ed Coquetto as like the most volunteering is volunteer <laughs> of our own community. This is awesome. Hi, I'm Joe Hurley from Kettle Ridge Farm. Um, at our Maple Farm in Victor, we're renting that out for the day to a very large advertising agency uh, that's going to be uh, having their own event. But we recently bought 30 acres in the hamlet of Egypt. And so in that location, we're going to have uh, an event open to the public, live music, food and drink, big bonfire. And luckily, we're located right next to the Crescent Trail and have a nice trail connecting to the Crescent Trail. So if you're familiar with that in Parenton, it's a very extensive trail system. So we will be leading a group hike right up to the top of the Crescent Trail. And we'll be having bagpipers up there to celebrate uh, the, the totality when that occurs. So again, we're hoping for good weather too. Thank you. Oh, hi, my name is Catherine Duffy and I'm with the Rochester City Ballet. Um, we're going to be holding an event on April 6th um, at Fairport Brewing. Um, it's going to be a small ticket price. We just want people involved. We're going to do solar eclipse themed dances, so themed music, um, brand new choreography. There's going to be specialty cocktails, so themed cocktails. We're hoping to include um, some of you. I know there was a dessert option and there was uh, wine. I know I emailed Dan, so I'll be reaching out. But um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're hoping to have someone speak. We're hoping to give out glasses. Um, but the Rochester City Ballet is creating a ballet specifically for the eclipse, for this event. We're hoping to have RIT students involved with creating the sets and backdrop. Um, but if any other events would like the Rochester City Ballet to perform their ballet for your communities, um, we're willing to travel and go other places. So um, my name is Catherine Duffy, and you can contact me at info at rochestercityballet.org. Um, and we're willing, yeah, to perform for you. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> How can I help you? You good? Can you take the bag for me? Want me to hold these up? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lindsay uh, Tarnoff, one of the owners of Laughing Gold Chocolates. This is Micah. He accompanies me most places these days. Um, so we are making special chocolate molds. We have a the art that Tyler Nordgren uh, created for Rochester and then a sun and a moon. Um, really excited. They traveled to Albuquerque with Priscilla this week, this past weekend. Um, we are also hosting an event with Warbox. Um, just one second now. There's it's a dark, lot more. Dark and pale. <laughs> dark and well. um, We're doing wholesale too. Um, we're also hosting an event with Warbox over at the public market. It's, we're focusing on accessibility. There's going to be a lot of educational, clearly family friendly events um, and programming there. Um, and so that's for the day of, right? The, the day of beer and chocolate yes. festival at the Rochester Public Market. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes. Hi, Micah. I think that's okay, it. Thank you. Pam Renfro of Fairport Parent and Merchants Association. We just had our Scarecrow Festival and our Scarecrows were um, uh, Eclipse themed, gave out a grand prize for that. So that was pretty fun. Um, we did have a designer create a poster for us and we created a coloring sheet that we handed out at Scarecrow Festival. This was really popular. This is your QR code that leads people to your spot. What I'm up here, I'm asking for, I need ticketed event information. Um, we're hoping to put together uh, Christmas boxes. People can purchase gift a gift box and we'd like to have some of them have ticketed events. So will those be listed on yes. the website? Okay, ticketed events so that we can purchase those tickets from you, put them in our gift baskets just to add a little bit to it. So thank you. It'll probably be online. Yeah, I would imagine.
Yeah, one second. Just wanted to uh, check the chat to see, can we move the camera up so those on Zoom can see what people are holding up? Ah, we will do that. Sorry, I just saw a couple comments. Uh, perfect. In that case, come up. Hi, everyone. Stacy Vandenberg from Cornhill Navigation. We have been lobbying the Canal Corporation to open the Erie Canal early. I don't think it's going to happen. So our event will actually be held on the banks of the Genesee River at Cornhill Navigation's new waterfront center at Cornhill Landing. And we are designing our event to be a family-friendly event with arts and crafts and eclipse related desserts. Probably we're thinking moon pies, half moon cookies. I think I have a friend of mine who's a professional baker gonna make us some sun cookies too to go with the moon cookies. So we can do the eclipse thing. But uh, we basically use the, as you saw in the presentation, we use the partial solar eclipse annular eclipse as um, a dry run for some of our activities. And in the coming week, we're very busy now with uh, fifth grade uh, school tours on the Genesee River. As soon as our boats go to bed for the winter, um, we are going to assess how things went and fine tune how exactly we're going to run our event on April 8th. We are very excited to be part of this community celebration. Thanks. Hello, folks. Uh, Tim Collins uh, from the Seventh Magnitude Vidcast. Um, I'm also the dignitary from uh, visiting next door in Buffalo. Uh, so I represent the today the Buffalo group, also trying to get things going. We're not as organized as you, but we're getting there <laughs> a little bit at a time. Our chief instigator, Mark Percy, is online behind me there. Um, so one of the things that I've been working on uh, is 1925, the last time the eclipse came through here. I've been doing a ton of research. Uh, writing a program right now for it. Um, I also have been doing a ton of the Eclipse deputy training for our city. Uh, so we're knee deep in that. Mark's been doing a lot of it too. Um, and just a quick story to share with you. Um, because the weather was so bad on Friday, I was sitting around the house very depressed. Uh, my family noticed it and they told me at uh, Friday 2.30, uh, my daughter said, Dad, if I could get you a ticket out West for 615 round trip, would you go? Yeah. So by five o'clock Friday, I was on a plane to Reno and Friday night, my nephew who's a meteorologist in Reno picked me up and Saturday morning, we drove three hours East to get onto the center line and we were greeted with clouds. Uh -huh. But at just the right moment, the clouds parted. See, there's something to this. And we caught annularity. And we also caught a little bit of a flash too when the moon crossed that third contact. So uh, fantastic trip, well worth it, wouldn't change a thing. There's more to it, I'd tell more if I had the time, but you'll have to come see me speak. Right. That's what we've been up to. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is James Berry. I work for the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra. We're a few weeks out from an official announcement, but I did want to share a little teaser that we will be doing. The RPO will be playing at the Blue Cross Arena on Sunday, April 7 at 7 p.m. Uh, stay tuned for details. Uh, Jeff Tysick will be conducting our principal pops conductor. The music director, Andreas Dels, will be conducting. There'll be an amazing experience inside the arena and uh, outside of it, we'll be creating a lot of experiences. Uh, for the community at large, so we'll need a lot of help and participation from all of you. But that's stay tuned for a bigger announcement. Hi, everybody. I'm Denise DeSantis Penwright from the Town of Parenton Recreation Center. And we are honored to have the poster exhibit in January at the Parenton Recreation Center. And so we have a kickoff event on January 6th. We'll have food trucks, a star themed uh, gym, open house, um, a bounce house, uh, open swim, various musical entertainment, food trucks, all sorts of fun for all ages, including a senior event. So thank you very much. Hello, I'm John Beal from Cockins Road Middle School in Pittsburgh, and we are premiering a brand new Eclipse-based musical this year. And I've been on a high since last night because I met with our composer and heard the uh, the rest of our music for the first time 
um, and it's actually gorgeous and moving and powerful. And like throughout the evening, I had goosebumps and almost teared up a little bit. Um, so, so we're so happy to bring this to Pittsburgh and bring this to Rochester. Uh, we're going to premiere it February 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and then we will reprise it the weekend of the eclipse, which has never been bef done before. We've taken a middle school cast. We're going to bring them back a couple months later um, to do that show again. And of course, we'd like to partner with any of you if you have any kind of businesses where you'd like to make some donations for lumber or paint or anything for costume. I'd love to talk to you. And I'll come back in a few months with information uh, also about um, advertising in our program. Thank you. Thanks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Antoine McDonald. I'm a librarian at the Rochester Public Library. Um, and we have an entire team working towards this effort. I'm not the team leader, but I'm working on that team. Um, so we'll have a series of events at our central public library, as well as our 11 branch libraries um, leading up to the eclipse. We'll be doing a big uh, giveaway for eclipse glasses and um, for the local history and genealogy division, which I am a librarian in. Uh, we have yours truly, Dan, coming to speak Saturday, March 16th. Um, ahead, of the, ahead of the program, uh, yes, ahead of uh, April's eclipse. So we have a lot of events going on at the public library. Just want to give a shout out to him because he also found uh, a dozen articles from us from the Democratic Chronicle from 1925, uh, for which the really cool story, uh, cool story is uh, 2,000 people were on what is now the Ponce de Rennes Bridge and it cracked. There's there's a lot of fun stories with it, uh, and not that history echoes, but that bridge is closed right now, and will be closed for the eclipse. Um, I think we will be wrapping it up, but I oh I'll show my screen. Uh, if anyone ever has any questions, I know Deb and I will be here for a little bit longer. More things are being added to the website continuously. Uh, if you are still looking for you know presentations we'll try and do our best our calendars are getting fairly booked uh and there's only a couple of us who really go traveling uh if uh on a personal note i know if you need to get a hold of me i'm still catching up i know a lot of your emails are in my inbox something about two conferences a media event and a partial eclipse kind of uh made it explode so i'm still catching up i'm trying to get back to all of you just give me a few more days so I want to thank everybody for being here. Um, you know, as I was saying earlier, we are creating stories. We don't know what the end of the story is going to be. And in fact, we won't even really know it till we won't know the weather till five minutes before. And you won't have had that experience until you have it. It might be glorious with the sun and the corona and that it might be that your world is plunged into pitch darkness. Either way, it will be a story. This is all part of the story. So keep documenting it. Keep telling us your stories so we can spread the word. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see everyone next month. Thank you, Dan and Deb. Thank you. Thank you.